how to create some interesting paint splatter in Affinity Photo, something like that. This is going to be using layers as well as various projections. Great. That's the start point using very basic paint splatter over there in the brushes panel. Just simply apply it. Just change the color using swatches and just apply blacks, greens, blues, whatever across the image. And that's the start point for this tutorial. It's very simple. Just, just quickly apply, set the brush size and apply. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to use that source material with layers and projections. So go to the layer menu and duplicate. Now you've got two layers, exactly the same. What you can do, you can go to the layer menu and just go down to live projection. And there's a couple there. And I'm going to go for the rectangular one projection. So select that one. And what you can do, you can just move it around. Like so just continue, just rotate it. And you can obviously select, you think, wow, that looks great. Just a certain point, just decide somewhere. Once you've decided on that, what you can do, maybe not that one, you can then rasterize it. So just avoid the seams, avoid that sort of crunched up at the top. You might like that sort of nice sort of paint trailing off there. So once you've decided on an image to save, what you can do, you can go to Layer Menu and Rasterize. And that's frozen. The live projection is gone. So what you can do, of course, then, is you can go to Layer Menu and duplicate that. Of course, you could, if you wish, continue to add some brush strokes and things to it. It's another thing as well. Layer Menu and Duplicate. Again, go down to the live projection and select the same one. Now you can go too far. You can see it gets it becomes a bit blurry, but at this stage, it's still you can still just rotate it, just move around, and you think, "Wow, that looks good. That looks a really nice thing." What you can do: layer menu and rasterize. And again, like I say, you can add some additional brush strokes if you wish. But of course, you've got layers now. So with layers, what you can do, and I'm just going to go to view and studio, and you can see the things, brushes, swatches, and layers. They're the key ones for this. What you can do with layers, well, you can change the blending modes, as well as the opacity if you wish as well. So you can run through those. You can go with difference, light and screen, darken, overlay, some work better than others, I mean, that looks great. And of course, at any point, what you can do, once you've decided, say that's a really nice paint splatter, you can always go to File Menu and export it. And again, of course, you can change the blending modes. But the other one, maybe lighter colour, add, whatever. Just run through them, experiment. And again, what you can do, you can always add additional strokes to it, if you wish. So of course, once you've done that, what you can do, you can go to Layer Menu and you can Merge Visible. You can also use Merge Down. That will just merge, obviously, one layer. But Merge Visible merges all the layers below into a single pixel layer, which you can then, of course, delete the earlier layers if you wish. Or you can just continue with them. Now you can duplicate that layer. And then, of course, what you can do, go down to the projection again, live projection. Select that one and then move that around. Just rotate it and then position it in a way you like. You think, wow, that looks great. I think that's brilliant. Just stop. At that point, what you can then do is go to the layer menu and rasterize again. And just keep doing that. So layer and rasterize. Of course, now you've got multiple layers. And again, you can continue. Those others, obviously, the layers below the, the fourth entry are not seen because of the blending mode. Again, once you've done that, you can go to live projection again once you've duplicated the design. Again, 
multiply the projection. Avoid that seam. Really want to avoid that seam. Doesn't look looks horrible, but you can create obviously create it so it gets close to that point where it's sort of really zooms in and crunches up. So you can just keep doing that and then go to the layer menu and rasterize again. So you've got layer and rasterize. And of course, what you can then do, now you can do this maybe more and more, but I'm I'm going to stop. I normally go to about the third one because then it starts, you can start to see it noticeably not looking so great. So what you can then do, go through the blending modes again in the layers panel, maybe go for lighter, add, overlay, maybe overlay, difference up to you. And of course you can always go to the next down layer and so on and so on, just go through them, just experiment. Go to difference, so like difference there. I mean, that looks pretty good. And again, you can vary that. Just keep trying different blends. Some work better than others. And of course, what you can always do, once you've got that design, you can always go to the layer menu and invert. If it's too dark, maybe invert it. So just keep trying, experimenting with different blends. And go up to the top one. And then what you can do, of course, you can always go and merge them all again. So layer menu and merge. But you can, of course, also go to various filters. Maybe apply some filters there. So layer menu and merge visible. So now all the layers are all merged. So you've got them all combined into that one. Now, of course, again, what you can do, you can always get rid of all those layer layers. Up to you. Again, you can then go to the blending modes and then vary that. Maybe go for overlay, difference, obviously not much use. Lighten and just keep doing, running through the blends. And of course, at any point, if you like a design, what you can do, just go to file menu and export and export it to PNG format, etc. What you can also do, of course, layer menu and duplicate, you can continue. So you've duplicated that now. Again, go to layer menu and go with the live projection, go with the rectangular one. And then, of course, again, move it around. You can see the design there, try and avoid the seams again. You can repeat that over and over again. Again, once you've done moved it, go to layer menu and then go up to the rasterize command again. Once it's been rasterized, apply some filters. Maybe apply brush strokes. You don't have to keep applying live projections. You can always just go to the blending modes and just blend it. Do it a couple of times and then find what works. Go to each entry in the layers panel and change the blending modes, experiment. Sometimes it will work, sometimes it won't. Sometimes you will end up with something that looks terrible. Sometimes it will suddenly look magical. For each of those layers, you can also go to the filters menu and apply various filters. Maybe blurs, maybe a deform effect. Up to you, just tweak it in all kinds of ways to create even more amazing designs. You can also go to the layers menu and maybe add live adjustment layers to recolor the design. And you can repeat this over and over again to create more and more interesting designs. You could, of course, use the macro panel to record it all. Again, I say layer menu and go down to merge visible. Again, you could use merge down. Again, go to those other layers, change those. Select all those, maybe, and just delete them so you can get rid of them. You don't need them. You've put them all into that single one, so you can get rid of it. Go to the filters menu and apply various effects, maybe blurs, distorts, etc. Or maybe try out equations. You can add many additional brush strokes to your design, maybe in black, maybe in white. Go to the swatches and change the colors to apply. You can also invert the colors. So go to layer menu and invert. So if you don't like the dark colors, you can always invert it to make it a lot lighter. I think personally, it looks better, lighter than dark. 
you can then continue to add some additional brush strokes. The brush strokes that were black are now white, and vice versa. You can always change the colour by going to the swatches panel. Once you've done that, you can go to the layer menu and duplicate, and then go to layer menu and live projections again. So, layer menu and duplicate. Now, of course, you don't have to use duplicate. You could, of course, create a new layer and add brush strokes to that. Again, go to layer menu and live projection and the rectangular one again. Move it around, try it out, experiment. And you can see the paint splatter in all different ways. You've got a lovely curve to it. Once you've decided on it again, of course, what you can do, you can always go to layer menu and rasterize. That. And of course, what you can do, you can blend again or maybe duplicate that. And you can see by doing this, you can add layer upon layer upon layer of paint to your designs. They create a far more interesting paint splatter effect than a very basic paint splatter. So again, layer menu, layer projection, and again, move that around. And you can go too far, just you can see, like, say, the don't want that. But as soon as you hit on something you really, really like, just go to layer menu and rasterize again. Layer menu and rasterize. And of course, once you've done that, go to the blending modes and go through those. Maybe multiply, color burn. They're all pretty good. Select one of them anyway. <laughs> Otherwise, you could just keep going backwards and forwards along there and change that one. Go with darker color, multiply. Again, any point, file and export to save it if you wish. Exclusion. And of course, once you've done that, what you can do, you can always go to filters and maybe blur, a Gaussian blur. Just to blur it, just to add that special touches to the image. Apply that. Just gives a subtle blur into your design, which adds even more to the paint splatter. Go to the top one again, layer menu and Merge them visible or merge down, perfectly reasonable. Merge down doesn't obviously bring them all in, but it merges those two. And then you could, of course, continue with that one. And that's quite a nice effect as well. Go to Layer Menu and then Merge Visible. Creates a very different design. And then, of course, continue with those. Maybe change the blending modes again. Experiment. Just keep adding layer upon layer upon layer to your design. You can also add, of course, additional brush strokes to the design as well. Select the layers and delete if you wish. And of course, once you've done that, what you can do, layer menu, go to adjustments. Invert again, if you wish, just experiment. I mean, that looks pretty good as well. Really beautiful pink splattered design. Of course, you can always add adjustment layers. You can also add additional effects, maybe filters, colors, auto levels. Maybe go to deform, filter menu and deform. So you can deform the design via the distort menu. Maybe use one of the other color effects. Or say, go to layer menu and new adjustment layer and HSL, recolor, etc. Or black and white to create a black and white design. HSL. Now, this is adjustment layer, so you'll get an additional layer on top. 
So if you, and then you can of course experiment again. You can just move the slider backwards and forwards and you see, wow. I mean, that just brings out that blue, all those light blues, the purples. And it's looking like a real paint splatter. You get sort of splattered on the floor after working on paint all day, with paint all day. And of course, once you've got, of course, you might not want that adjustment layer. What you can do, you can always go to the layer menu and then merge it, merge visible to merge it all into one. Or maybe go to another adjustment layer. Maybe add black and white. If you don't want color, just go for black and white. And again, you can explore these reds, just change the values, and you can bring out more unusual paint splatters from that. You can experiment over and over again with these features create some really interesting background textures as well as maybe overlays for images so you don't have to just use it as a as a as a background it could be added on top of images and then obviously blended in with the image to give it some sort of texture so you can of course what you can do you can always go to the blending modes here as well so you can go with the black and white one you don't have to just keep it in black and white you can go maybe for multiply and you can always vary this at any point, you can always go back to it and change it. Again, what you can do, save it, file export and save. And of course, what you can do, you can merge visible if that's it, if you want to. And of course, you've still got those layer layers. You can always bring them back if you wish. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Please subscribe to the Graphic Extra channel. Always adding new tutorials about Affinity Photo, Photoshop, Illustrator, Affinity Designer, and many others. Also, please add some comments. Always appreciated. A dislike or like. Thank you much.